task demands. Um, are we asking our patient, our loved one, to do too much, too quickly, with too many steps to it? Um, there's a thing that we refer, a reaction that we call catastrophic reactions. And what that means is the patient has an intense uh, outburst of emotion, anger, anxiety, distress. It's, it's catastrophic. And hysteria, I mean, whatever you, the patient just goes, you know, hysterical. And a lot of times people wonder, oh my gosh, how can I cope with this? This is terrible. And sometimes it helps to just say, well, what triggered it? What, what usually triggers it? And when I talk with my caregivers, sometimes the answer is, well, you know, I told him he did that wrong, or I pointed out that he um, asked me that already, or I, I showed him how that's not a, a person, that's just a lamp. Because he's got to understand that. And, and sometimes what we discover is, you know, if we, we push our, our loved ones a little too much, sometimes they kind of push back and, and react. And um, sometimes if we ask too much, if we, if we um, ask too much of our loved ones, they uh, can't cope and, as you can imagine, get quite frustrated. Sometimes we maybe do too little. We have a tendency to, um, I'll do it. Go sit down. Go sit down. I, I, you know, you're too slow. <laughs> and, and in fact, that can also be a problem as far as uh, excess disability. It can generate over-dependence. Um, and that can also be problematic. Communication style. I always ask my patients, if you could tell your, your, your spouse or your child or your caregiver one piece of advice in, in helping you to cope with this illness, what would it be? And I like to do this with, the, you know, the family member in the room. And I'll, nine times out of ten, what I hear is, slow down. Unlike me rushing through, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't rush me. And, and, and that is very, uh, very good advice from the patients themselves because a lot of times what we have a tendency to do is to try to um, rush through, get them to hurry up and put your clothes on, we have to go. I mean, really give enough time. If the person is having trouble communicating or understanding, use fewer words. You don't have to explain the whole bank statement. Just get to the bottom line or, or be reassuring about it. You don't have to go through the whole detailed explanation. Um, that just may be just a little overwhelming and too much. It's a natural response that we often have to try to um, correct our, our, our loved ones, got to set the record straight. And, you know, sometimes what we'll, when we do that, we, we call it sort of reality oriented. I'm going to tell him what's real because I'm not going to lie to him. And, you know, if the patient responds by saying, oh, okay, um, that, that guy's not really there, okay, whatever you say, fine. But a lot of times what the patient will, will think or say is, what's wrong with me? I can't do anything right. Wow, I failed again. This is just terrible. What does my future hold? It's very anxious. Or they get angry. Who are you to tell me that there's no one there? What are you talking about? You mean to tell me that I can't see that person? That's a person right there. So sometimes what will happen is you'll get a angry response or a anxious response and if you get those responses try not to reality orient try not to set them straight sometimes it's better to just go along with it well I think the question is what do you do if it's a dangerous issue like what if they want to go what if they want to eat something that they really can't eat because of problem swallowing and I think the question is are they really do they really have the corn on the cob in front of them they're just about to bite into or are they just telling you I really want corn on the cob because I think the best thing to do if they're just telling you they're just talking about boy I wish I had this it's not that they're gonna run to the grocery store and get it um, or maybe you know uh, go and cook one up or something like that so sometimes just going along with it oh yeah I know we used to love corn wasn't that great and and talk about it you know, I think the best thing to do is not to say, you can't have that. The doctor said no, because it, it just makes a person feel bad. They feel like, God, I can't do anything. I can't have anything. And it, it's just very um, um, upsetting. Whereas sometimes just talking about, oh, yeah, remember those times we used to have 
uh, those, those cookouts, boy, those were the days. And then sort of redirect the conversation along to, remember that time, old Aunt Bessie, da da da, da you know, and then sort of, you know, redirect. I think we mistake what people are telling us as we, we you know, if they say, I, I want to go home and they're home, we assume that we have to sort of reason with them and explain. And the doctor said you can't drive and you can't do this, so of course, you know. And, and sometimes the best thing to do is to just listen validate their emotion. What they're telling you is, boy, I sure miss my independence. I sure miss that feeling of comfort that I used to have in the past. I sure miss whatever, driving. And, and it's not necessary to just constantly tell the patient, no, you can't do that. Sometimes what you can do is just, you know, yeah, I, I validate what they're feeling. I know it's really hard. You are a really good driver. You, you know, uh, we did a lot of things together. And then after you validated them, not dismissed them and not said no, but validated, and then you can kind of shift the conversation along to something else. Because I think we have to understand that, you know, this is a series of losses, and we have to uh, respect that too. That, that's a very good question. And the other thing about communication are nonverbal cues. When, um, I, when I teach my technicians how to administer tests, one of the things that I harp on and harp on is tone of voice. Very important that we don't screech at our loved ones or our patients, that we, and that we aren't always angry. Um, and what happens is patients, people mirror us. If we're calm, uh, the person is usually calm. If we get kind of, you need to do this now, then sometimes they'll stiffen up and, and mirror that. And it's, it's, it's human nature. You don't have to have a dementia to do this. I mean, it happens day to day and, you know, wherever you go. If you have a clerk that's a little bit, you know, kind of nasty, you just sort of stiffen up yourself. If they're really smiley and nice, you kind of smile back. It's just a very natural phenomenon. So we really do need to watch our, our own cues. If you're feeling stressed and you can't, control that, that's your cue to get some extra help, to get some time out, to get someone else in to, to give you some respite, some, some time away.